I'm expecting God to move for me The blessing that He has in store for me And so that's your neighbor had you voted. Ask him again. Because you if you really voted, and I'm not talking about Trump and Hillary Clinton neither. Because your lifestyle and where you letting and where you at. <laughs> tells us whether you voted or not for him or for him. <laughs> Glory to God. Now in Joshua chapter 24, God permit us. And those of you that has a testimony, put them on hold for next, until the next time. Amen. Because it's after one. I'm getting just getting here. Amen. Because you're going to see here what Joshua is instructing the people, amen, to put their boats in. Joshua 24, 15, let's read it quickly. Are your mic on? All right. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day. Just vote. Can you read it? Whom, you will, whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served. Vote for the, the person that you're going to gonna serve. I keep, whether the gods are your what? Which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood. Uh -huh. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Mm -hmm. But as for me and my house, we will serve the me Lord. Me and my house already voted. We're going to serve the Lord. Ask your neighbor, have you voted? Y'all heard me in here, don't you? Yeah. Now we're going to, and, and let me tell you what Joshua was actually doing, he did the oath, because he was actually instructing the people to vote, and their vote would decide whether the Lord would be their God or the devil would be their God. That's all they were doing. So George Joshua said, for as for me in my house, that I vote is to him, not him. Somebody tell him thank you. Now vote. To, to vote, making a vote is a decision, amen, or a choice that every person makes. It's actually an election. Oh, we praise and we got the gifts and we got all of those things, but how is your lifestyle? How, how, how is your lifestyle? Uh-huh. See, in the Garden of Eden, Genesis, Mm. Chapter 3 and verse 6, you'll see where Adam and Eve voted. They already had a sure candidate, but they voted. Y'all hear me? Uh, let's read Genesis 3 and 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, 
And he did eat. They voted to turn their back on God. Now, Acts chapter 5. Chapter 8, verse 5, because we're going to look at a deacon, a deacon called Philip that actually voted. He died because of his vote, but he voted. At chapter 8, verse 5 through 8, let's read it quickly. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many, and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. The call of his vote to walk in the ministry 100 fold. You cannot half step. Uh, verse 20. Six read in eight Acts eight, Amen. Twenty six read what? And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. That would, Amen. When you give God your vote, Amen, or become a delegate for the Lord, Amen. He can use you. Don't tell me He won't work signs and wonders and miracles. Now, for everything, now, now let me tell you, look at the name and say, let me tell you, since you have to vote for a candidate, it's not about you. Tell them again. How in the world do you get in the picture? You have to vote for a candidate since it's not. You think all of these people now that are, amen, promoted Trump and Hillary Clinton is not about them? No. It's not about you. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment. Your peace of mind or even your happiness. God does not base salvation on our happiness. But he said, but I give you perfect peace in the spite of all of your warfare. And your mind has stayed on me. Now, it is far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dream and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, <laughs> You must begin with God. Somebody shout, vote. Focusing on ourselves will never reveal our life's purpose. You will never know who God wants you to be looking at you and trying to protect you and your little bitty weak feelings. Don't we serve an awesome God? The word say. It is God who directs the lives of his creatures. And in everyone's life is in his power, in his hand. Isn't he an awesome God? Now let me tell you what the word say, because the word actually say, for everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible. <laughs> everything got started in him and find its purpose in him and him alone. He is the candidate you want to vote for. He is the candidate have all power in his hand. He is the only candidate that can deliver you. He is the only candidate can bring you out of your dilemma. Somebody tell him thank you. Colossians 1.16 read, For by him were all things created that are in heaven. Somebody say heaven. Yeah. And that are in the earth. Somebody say in the earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him. Somebody tell him thank you. All things were made by him. And what John said, 
John, let me give you the text for John. Amen. Let's look at it. Get your Bibles. John 1, 3 through 5. Let's read it quickly. Let's go to John 1, 3 through 5. Let's read it. Amen. St. John chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Read it quickly. All things were made by them, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh -huh. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life of him was the what? Light of men. Now, would, now, now, now would you want to, wouldn't you want to serve a candidate like that? Isn't God an awesome God? Yes. We ought to be everywhere, everywhere, everywhere promoting who we serve. Let's read. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it, it not. Mm -hmm. There was a man sent from God whose Let's name right was there. John. Hold it right there. Go to verse 5. And Go the light. Verse. Go to verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Shines over the world, all over the entirety of the world. Amen. And one day soon there will be nothing left but somebody shall light. light. John 12, 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a grain of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abide alone, but if it die, it brings forth. Now, you're going to tell me. Amen, that you already voted, amen, but you don't want to die. Uh, you, you, you sure you voted? You sure you voted for the right candidate? You sure you voted? Do y are, are you really sure you voted for the right candidate? Are you sure? Now, now let me tell you, about why worry about how fast we grow? God is concerned about how strong we grow. Somebody tell him thank you. Discipleship is the process of conforming to the one that we are voting for. Somebody said, Jesus our Lord. Jeremiah 2.21, yet I have planted you a whole noble vine, holy a right seed. Somebody said, right seed. Somebody say, not a corrupt seed, but a right seed. How then are you turned into a degenerate plant of a strong vine unto me? He said, amen, if I save you, I, every time I look at you, I am supposed to see me in you, in God and awesome God. Zechariah 8 and 12, for the sea shall be prosperous. Somebody better shout, that's me. The vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heaven shall give her due. And I will call the remnant of this people mm, to process all these. Somebody said, this is the one to vote for. John 4, 28. The woman showed the people that she had voted for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. In verse 28, the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city. And she said to the men, I need to introduce a candidate to you. He just told me everything about who I was. He told me I had five husbands and the one that I have now are not my own. I want you to introduce you to the candidate that I have learned to vote for. His name is Jesus and he can save me. He can save you and bring you out of your sin. Do you hear what I'm saying? She voted for Jesus verse 3 verse 37 wherein is that saying true one souls one souls one souls and another does what why can't we work together in church why can't we work together why is it got to be all about me and who I am why is it about me this is not about you Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not about you. You're supposed to be dead. It's about the one we voting for. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. 
Look at John 4, 36. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit. Wages are sold. This is what he that reapeth receive wages a soul. He was not talking monetary here, but he that reapeth, reaps, receive wages or souls. Souls. Wages are sold. And gather fruit unto life eternal. Gather fruit unto life eternal. That back he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice where? Together. Oh, yeah. Together. Well, why can't, why can't we be together in church? Why can't we be together in church? I, I use the word together. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, because, amen, when, when we are together, we're going to be on one accord. We're not going to be backstabbing. Y'all heard me in here? Uh -huh, we're not going to be turning our back on each other. But we're going to have each other back. Do y'all hear me up in here? So God wants to bless us. But, sweetheart, we, 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 we got it wrong. Uh huh. We can't serve, amen, serve the God that we say he is. And do some of the things that we do. Verse 30, I sent you to reap that whereon you bestow no labor. Other men, other men labor and you have entered into that labor. You look at your neighbor and say you were made by God for God alone. And until you understand that, life to you will never ever make, make any sense. Tell them, but, but, but God. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 said, but at this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So somebody need to look at a neighbor, ask your neighbor, you delegate. Are you delegating the word? Because we have an ultimate candidate. His name is Jesus. Ask your neighbor, have you voted for real? I, I, I mean, ask him again, have you really, really voted for the candidate called Jesus? Because he'll bless you. In the midst of your enemy, he'll bless you. He'll raise you up. And look at her name and say, guess what? My candidate right now is blessing me right now in the midst of all of you. You might not can't see it, but he's blessing me right now. Look at her name and say, neighbor, vote for the real candidate. His name is Jesus. Have you voted? Ask him again, have you voted? Because I don't see how some of us think we're going to heaven. You got to vote before you get here. I'm watching all of them. I'm watching all of the candidates and I'm watching all of the people that are promoting them. Amen. And I'm seeing them running to and fro here and there. Amen. Delegating on behalf of the candidate. So look at your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, are you delegating in the supernatural? For the candidate called Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, get out of here and get out, get up off the stool or do nothing in you boat. Because you have a candidate, so get out and delegate for your candidate. Whatever you have to do, knock on people's doors and ask your neighbor, have you voted for the candidate of heaven? Somebody come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Ask your neighbor, have you voted for the candidate of heaven? Because right now, I'm delegating on his behalf. I'm letting all of you know that he is a God that will save you and deliver you, and he will bring you out. Delegating, I'm delegating, I'm delegating. That's your neighbor. Have you are you delegating? Are you delegating? There is a candidate who made absolutely everything. Have you voted? Because you know what? Some people said in church that I've seen praising God, anointed by God, sitting up in church now, act like they don't even know who God is. Are you sure you're voting for the right person? 
Are you sure you're delegating? Somebody look at the neighbor and say, look, let's, let's do it together. Tell them again, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Now let me tell you something. You were made by God. And for God. And you got to understand that when you are a child of God, it doesn't matter what comes to pass. You're going to be the one standing when your battery is over because of the candidate that you are delegating for. Uh, Galatians 6 and 7 and 8 read, Be not deceived, for God did not mark for whatsoever man so it's that shall he all the way reap. Whatever man, the way the man votes is what he's weak. That's basically what he's saying. Your vote every day tells us who you are voting for. Verse 8, for he who sold to his flesh shall out of flesh reap what? Uh-huh. But he who sold to the spirit shall out of the spirit reap what? Philippians 1 and 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and the praise of God. Now look at your name and say, if you choose the right candidate. As a running mate, you will never focus on you. For you will know that you should be non-existent in this race. Oh, this race is not about you. I don't care how much you holler, it's not about you. I don't care how much you sing and you dance and you pray, this race is not about you. It's about the candidate from whom we are supposed to be. Look at your name and say, are you delegated? Are you promoting your candidate? Call Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He's our El Sharia. He's our omniscient God. He's omnipresent. Did somebody say he is the ultimate candidate? Go out and vote for him. I'm campaigning for the right candidate. I don't know about y'all. Y'all, y'all, are you? Are you sure you can't? Are you sure you campaigning for the right candidate? Somebody say his name again. Is Jesus the Lord? Has all power in his hand. I know he's gonna win. This race is already won. All we're doing is just running to the amen home. Y'all heard me? We're trying to hit the home baseline. But he already hit a home run for us. Amen. His name is Jesus. He is the right candidate, and we're delegated for him. Revelation 22, 13. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's the right choice. And I'm looking at so many people now. Some of y'all here in the church now, you have not voted physically voted. Y'all know some of you haven't. I don't care who you vote for. Vanessa got me out there the second day, votes be gone. Mama, are you going to vote? Come on, let's go with that before the line get long. And we went and we voted. So the same sacrifice that we had to make to go vote for a Trump or Clinton, that's the same sacrifice. But guess what? We had to leave the house to do it. Y'all got to leave this house to do it. Y'all heard me in here. You got to give off of those pews. From woman to old pew and get over you because you ain't you non existent in the first place. Go out and delegate for your candidate and let the demon know on the street when you go out to somebody say, I want you to vote for my candidate. His name is Jesus. He'll save you from your soul. He'll deliver you. He'll heal your body. Isn't God an awesome God? He is the right delegate to vote for.
He is before all things importance. Supremacy. Preeminent. Nothing is superior to him. That's the kind of candidate we serve. Yeah. He alone is the sovereign majesty of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> he stands before all supreme. In God good. All else, every single thing stands under him. On and there existing. Worship and service and praise belong to him. He is the right candidate in God also. Yeah. Psalm, and I'm always I'm almost finished. Psalm 92, 13, amen, through 15. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. He is the right candidate. Yeah. Verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit. Somebody say in old age. Somebody look at a neighbor and say, I might be older than you, but I'm not going anywhere. Do you hear what I say, beloved? For they shall bring forth fruit in their own age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Because they serve the right candidate. So you got to get out and delegate. Somebody tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need to get out of this church and delegate for your candidate. His name is Jesus Christ, the sovereign God that saved us from our sin. He will deliver you. He will bring you out. He will bless you. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you still have time to vote. Tell them again. You still look at them real hard. Say, you still have time to vote for the right candidate. His name again is Jesus Christ. He is Lord. He is the only candidate that can bring you out and deliver you. Revelation 19, 15, and 16. He's the only candidate worthy of our votes. Verse 15, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that will it, he will smack the nation. <laughs> and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shreds he, the winepress of the fierceness with wrath of Almighty God. <laughs> Verse 16, he has on his vesture and on his thigh the name. That's the right candidate. King of kings and Lord of lords. He not only the amen right candidate, he is the only, somebody shall only candidate. So what I need you to do, amen, to realize is you should not be existing. This is not about you. This has absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> amen. You got to get out, amen, after you voted. <laughs> you got to get out, amen, and go out there and delegate it for your candidate. <laughs> because he said, amen, he will bless them. He'll bless you. And bless you That's right. and bless all of you. He the only candidate have all the riches in his position. A thousand cattle <laughs> on a hill belong to him. He owns your bank account. Y'all, y'all do hear me, don't you? He owns your little business. Y'all hear me up in here. He owns your temper. He is the temper. He called you and molded you to be the temper of the living God. Y'all heard me up in here. We got to get out and we got to delegate too, because there's a lot of people in the street. Too. I'm expecting God to move for me. The blessing that he has in store for me.